Hola chicos. How are y'all doing today? I hope that you are all recovering well from your Christmas break and now ready to go and excited about the spring semester and of course completing Spanish too. We have started this journey together and I hope that you are all excited to learn new information um, about Spanish language culture and also of course about the Spanish language. Now, um, last semester, uh, we had a lot of things happening. Um, and, you know, so we, we learned a lot of new things. And so this semester, we're going to dive right in. We're going to get started a little bit with review in the way that the semester is set up. So the first couple of weeks, we're going to go over some things that we already had in Spanish one, but just to kind of get us familiar again, go over it and kind of um, get a jumping off point for uh, starting up the term. So we'll start a little bit with a couple of things that are review so that we can kind of be familiar and get on the same page. Now, I know that some of you were having a hard time last semester um, keeping within the kind of requirements for each assignment. So just make sure that you are reading really thoroughly the explanations for the assignments and that you are checking on the page numbers for where everything is in the assignment. So uh, let me just show you a little bit about what I mean there so that that way we can kind of all be on the same page. I just wanna make sure that when you are looking at the assignments um, that you are making sure that you are reading through all of the instructions really carefully um, and knowing what it is that you're required to do. So for example, let's say I was to want to look ahead a little bit and I want to look in week two um, just to see what it is that I am meant to do, right? So when I go into this assignment, right, it says that I'm meant to take make an introduction video. That's great. Um, here, right, it says I meant to write this assignment in English, right? Now it says I'm meant to give examples. And if I go down into the Dropbox itself, um, it will give me some models to follow for all of those examples. And you'll see that I've done very simple models for you to follow. That's true of all of these assignments. So if I go into any assignment, first of all, it's gonna tell me what thing I'm meant to be doing in that assignment. So let's say, I was much more ahead, right? And I was uh, using the imperfect, for example. And I go into, let's say I go into this composition assignment. Here, it's gonna show me, I need to use only the imperfect. So that's the only verb tense that I'm allowed to use for that assignment. Now, I know that this was something that people got a little bit tripped up about, um, but here, right, I've given you a model to kind of follow, and you'll notice that it's very simple. Um, I'm never expecting anything beyond the scope of what it is that you are being taught in this class. So if you are trying to overcomplicate it, um, don't, right? Uh, always simple is best. So the thing that I would do whenever starting any of these assignments is first, I would say, or, or, you know, I would have you say, what is it that I know how to say with the Spanish I have right in front of me in the textbook and also with what I have learned so far? Let me start by writing with that. That's what I need to do. I may want to explain this really super complicated thing that I know in my adult English, but you're not in at an adult level of Spanish, right? You're more at a, a much smaller uh, kind of segmented version, um, much more childlike version of the language. So you want to keep it very simple um, and and yeah and and just very clear and not try to overdo it. That was an issue that a lot of people had um, in last semester's information. Okay. Here's another thing that I wanted to talk about. This is something that a couple of people got tripped up on last semester. So um, we're at we're in the first week of the semester. And so I know that sometimes people feel like, oh, free week, you know, nothing for me to do. But actually, this is the week whenever you are supposed to be going through all of these assignments, looking them over and really getting familiar with what it is that you're supposed to do. Now, you have two quizzes that you were supposed to complete in the beginning week. You did them or you did something kind of similar to them in Spanish one, you're going to do it again in Spanish two, because not everybody takes Spanish one with me. And some people are coming into it in a, um, after having done Spanish one with somebody else, or, um, after maybe having clept Spanish one. So, um, I have everybody do those quizzes again. Now, 
some people got a little bit mixed up because the quizzes never opened for them because they didn't look at all the course content that was required in order for the quiz to open. It is very important that you complete. You can't just open it and then expect for the quiz to open. It's not going to do that. The quiz wants to know and is set up, Brightspace is set up to show that you physically read through all of that material. So it has to be marked as complete in order for the quiz to open up. And everything that is listed in week one, all of those little pieces of information, the videos, um, there are two videos that you're meant to watch. Um, there are uh, two documents that you're meant to look at, you know, and you're getting to know the course, um, the, the course information sheet, and then also the, the syllabus checklist you're also meant to open. Um, you're meant to open your syllabus and you have to read through it all the way through in order for those quizzes to open. So it's really important that you view them completely. You have to open them. And this is what a lot of people found, right? They would open it, they kind of glance through it, and then the quiz wouldn't open. Well, it it you have to have completed it all the way through in order for the quiz to mark that item as completed. Okay. So that's something that also is a little bit tricky. So just as you're getting into this first week, just make sure that you're completing all of those things. You're looking through them, you're reading through them. Um, once this week is done, you're really expected to be familiar with the way that the course is set up and understand how to submit assignments. That includes, right, submitting assignments into the plagiarism Dropbox prior to submitting them into the discussion board. That's something that a lot of people don't do and then they just don't get the grade for it. So just make sure, right, that you're getting all those pieces together. Even if it's a video, I expect you to submit the link, excuse me, submit the link into the plagiarism Dropbox. When you do your intro video, I want you to submit that link into the plagiarism Dropbox just to start to get familiar with taking that first additional step before you do anything else. So um, something to kind of remember. All right. Um, one other thing that uh, sometimes <laughs> gets people tripped up is that um, this is the first year that we're using a new textbook. Um, and so we've, we've just started out with this new textbook and this textbook is called Juntos. Now, when we, or when I design, I say we in, in the rural sense, when I designed this, uh, cor this course, um, we were using a different book and that book was called Plazas. Now, since we've moved into Juntos and um, I've tried to eliminate all references to plazas, but it's really hard to do. Um, and some of the course content um, was not updated into, um, you know, into juntos because it just takes so long to create that course content. Um, and so um, if you see any reference to plazas or any kind of page numbers in there, and it doesn't match up with what's in your book, you can just ignore it. <laughs> um, it just means that that was information that was made whenever we were still using plazas. The information and the content itself is still valid, right? The, the information contained in the video is always still valid. But if there's a page number, or if there's a reference to something in the textbook, and it doesn't match up with what's in Juntos, you just let it go and move on um, and, you know, use the information contained in the video anyway. Um, all right. Um, if you find any errors in the class, don't assume that it's supposed to be that way. I spent hours and hours and hours trying to make sure that the class was updated for Juntos and updated for the new semester and that everything was correct. And I woke up several times to find that Brightspace had deleted content that I had put in or moved content or not put something in right or, you know, whatever. So it's a it's a technology. And so technology always has its hiccups. And I've tried to go through and, and make sure that all of those due dates and all those things are correct. But if you find anything, don't assume that it's meant to be that way. Just let me know. And that way I can know because sometimes even however my, however many times I check it, uh, I still sometimes find errors in there. And so I'm, I apologize in advance for all of that. I'm very sorry, um, but uh, it's not there intentionally. So just uh, make sure to let me know already this morning. Um, and it's Monday, I've woken up to find uh, already <laughs> a place where I added a file and Brightspace deleted it. So who knows why? Um, the last thing that I just want to say as I end this welcome video, uh, welcome you to this class. And I'm so excited that we're here. We're going to get to know each other a little bit better and um, kind of start this adventure together is that um, I'm here for anything that you need. If you are confused in any point during the semester, don't stay confused. Please, 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 please 
email me and let me know that you're confused. Let me know that something isn't clear, right? If you're looking at an assignment and you think to yourself, oh my gosh, I have no idea where to even begin with this assignment. Don't stay confused. Don't use Google Translate. I am here for you. <laughs> that is what I am here for. I am here to help clarify things for you. And no question is silly. No question is wrong. All questions are valid. And you never know. The thing is, is that sometimes one person or a few people are confused about something and they think, oh, I am the only person who is confused about this item. And in reality, that's not true, right? Lots of people are confused about it. They're just too embarrassed to speak up. So maybe you're the person who brings that point to clarification and, um, you know, everybody else then gets the benefit, right, of having that point clarified. So um, anytime you want to ask something, I'm here for you and be feel free to call me or email me. Um, I only have office hours on Monday and Wednesday between the hours of 11 and four. So if you call, that's really the only time that I will be here in my office. Um, but if you email me, I will email you back within 24 hours, often, uh, sooner than that. I'm very quick with email, um, you know. And uh, so I, I will get back to you as soon as I can. I'm happy to fix anything, even if it's over the weekend. Um, and so I really am here for you. If you need anything, you just have to let me know. Okay. So um, I just really encourage you to reach out should you need anything else. All right, guys. Uh, anything else that you need? Of course, I am here for you. And you just have to let me know. I'm here in my office too. So if you ever want to come by and give me a visit, um, I'm happy to see you. And uh, I hope that we are going to have a great term to, uh, together. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to this class. I love teaching it. And um, I hope that you will enjoy it as much as I love making it. So um, I hope to see you all soon and get to know you all soon. Bye guys. I hope you have a great week getting to know this, the class.